Welcome to Ask Me About K-Pop, the essential guide for recent converts and seasoned fans alike. My name is Shannon. And I'm Angelica. And oh, I'm so excited about today because we're just diving into exactly what we said we were going to do, which is turning mm-hmm. this into a full-time Shawl podcast. Because um, I don't want to think about anything else but shiny for the rest of the month. I decided yeah, it. We very i think explicitly said that it was very likely that we would do a whole month of content leading up to shiny's comeback and we are following through with that promise (laughs) yes but before we get there corrections for last week we should get those out of the way because once we start talking shiny i'm gonna lose my brain and forget yes so yes i had two things that i wanted to add in listening back to the to the uh to the episode the first was that i did have one omission from the 2020 timeline that i i did intend to talk about because it was specifically an english release Mm -hmm. and that is sunmi's borderline right the uh lyrics to that song she she released on her Twitter in February of 2019, but the official single and music video were released in August of 2020. Um, and that song deals with her experience with borderline personality disorder, which she talked about more on the show Running Girls, which she was on in December of 2020. Um, so that was an addition to the timeline that I wanted to, that I had intended to put. And I was like so devastated when I listened back and I was like, no. But then the correction I wanted to make was that I misspoke when I was talking about Blackpink's The Album. I listened to that album quite a bit when it came out. And so when I was doing the research, I like trusted my memory on it. And my (laughs) memory was flawed um, because it's been a while since I listened to it. And so I had said that the uh, Cardi B song was bilingual. But that song is actually fully in English, as well as two other B-sides on that album. So three of the song, three of the eight tracks on that album are fully in English. But what I was trying to emphasize, and I think what ended up making my mistake, was that all of the promoted tracks were bilingual. Um, however, I did say that in the the ice cream song with Selena Gomez is mostly in English, and both the Blackpink members and Selena Gomez sing in English and then there's one Korean verse at the end but the reason I didn't include it in the official like 2020 English release timeline is because the four promoted tracks were bilingual which I thought was really interesting but because it wasn't like a sole English release Mm. it didn't fit into that bracket but I wanted to make sure that I corrected myself okay love it we love a good correction um okay so to for today's business like we said, I don't want to think about or talk about anything but Shiny till Shiny is here. And then even after then, we'll see. <laughs> so, um, I mean, we'll have stages and like outfits to rank. There will be another stage outfit spotlight, I'm sure. Oh, my God. Oh, there's just so much. Wow. So um, to prepare our hearts and minds and try to do um, a game-ish episode, more of a playlist building episode than like a game episode, um, we thought we would do one of those little like song mood challenges uh, using only shiny B-sides as our pool to choose from. Yes. Yeah, I don't usually do, I've never done one of these song challenges. I've only ever tried to do like the brackets where you have to like choose which song is better or whatever. Um, And yeah, this, we had 11 different categories. So I'm just going to list them all out. And then I kind of wanted to pick your brain about like what some of them meant. Because I I realized, whatever, we'll just talk about it. Okay, go ahead. So there's like a song for a rainy day, a workout song, a song that makes you feel nostalgic, A wedding song, a song that sounds like love, a karaoke song, a song that should have had a music video, a song for the locals, a song that makes you feel cool, a comfort song, and then a getting ready song. Mm -hmm. And I, what was your interpretation of a song for the locals? 
I guess I was thinking like a song that you would play for the non K pop fan as a like the song that is maybe the most like appealing or whatever. Okay, okay, okay. Is that I guess is what I was thinking. The interpretation I realized I had been missing when I was like <laughs> first building my list. Because when I I don't know why this was how I thought of that category, but my immediate thought was what is a song that non what is a B side that non Shawol K pop fans mm. should know of? I and so see. I had originally thought of like some f- weird fucking s- <laughs> I picked like specifically niche songs because I was like, if you already like K pop but you don't listen to Shiny, you should know that this song exists, mm. right? But then I realized like, oh wait, I think locals means non K pop. <laughs> so then I had to like Totally switch gears and be like, wait, none of these choices were. No, that's very interesting. And now I want to like know what you picked when we get or maybe start we get with there. that one. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. But I, I struggled with that. This is I pulled these categories just like out of the air and I like Google image searched like song challenge things and I just like typed them up in a notes thing in my phone and I tried not to think mm-hmm. about it. I didn't even think about shiny songs. I was like. I don't want to go that second step, just like come up with categories. And then when I got to that category, I was like, oh no, this is a mistake because I feel like the point of shiny is that it's not for the locals. It's yeah. all fucking weird. Like that is all really weird. That's why I love it. Like, because it's, um, it's not, I don't know. Well, well, a lot of it because is not even, palatable to the average Even within person. K-pop, yeah, like, Shiny <laughs> is a niche group and, like, is a group that's known for trying new sounds and they usually end up being trendsetters in that way because they try something nobody else is doing and make something that's, like, what is this song? And then, you know, two years later, everybody's doing it. Um, but... Yeah, I this was a fun challenge though because it gave me a chance to go back and listen to some albums that I haven't listened to in a really long mm-hmm. time and I was like making my list and then I was like, "Oh wow, I have like the entire Lucifer album on here. <laughs> like maybe I should pick songs from other albums." <laughs> no, I'm very But I Yeah, no, go ahead. Oh, all I was just going to say, I did put some parameters on myself just because we are fulfilling our promise of having a full shiny month in like homage to the (laughs) fact that shiny is coming back. Um, And so because of some things that we plan to do for future episodes, I decided to try and focus on everything that was pre story of light. So if this is, and I mostly thought of it in the chronology of our show really, because I was Mm. like, if you listen to the Shawl's guide and then you listen to the shiny bracket and then you listen to this one, like it will make sense. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like we haven't talked about those other albums yet on the show. So let's talk about the like songs that we haven't maybe mentioned yet, but that we've already covered in the like discography and chronology of our, of our show. Yeah. Um, So yeah, so I tried to do that and then I also tried, I like went back to our shiny episode and I was like, what were the B-sides that we like talked about and recommended so that I could think of different ones? New ones. ones. Because there's so, shiny's music is so, there's so much of it. There's so much of it. So I like tried to give myself parameters so that I would cover, potentially be able to shout out more tracks. Okay. Well, I'm glad. Without being repetitive. I'm glad that you did that. (laughs) <laughs> because I think I think there was a point where there were a couple of songs where I was like, oh, my God, but I've talked about these like I've talked about this song too many times on the show before. And I'm like thinking about like, I don't want to repeat myself and like whatever. But like if that is what my heart feels, then that's my answer. And also, maybe this is someone's first episode, so they haven't heard me say that five times. The shiny episodes bring people in. So, like, you know what? Maybe I decided to just, like, be honest. And if that makes, if some of my choices are repetitive, then so be it. No, and that's fine. And that's why I just wanted to explain at the top that I did give myself parameters. Because if someone is going to be like, what do you mean you didn't choose this song as the song or whatever? I'm just going to be like, because I've already talked about that song in like five other episodes. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to the show, then you already know how much I love Excuse Me, Miss. Right. (laughs) 
Totally. Because, like, that is my song for the locals. Like, I mm. do that. That is the one of the videos that I show people when they ask me why sure. I like K-pop. So I was like, okay, challenge yourself to not talk about excuse me, miss. <laughs> yeah. Challenge failed. Already. <laughs> Already failed. I <laughs> you know. That's interesting. Interesting. Okay, yeah. And we haven't seen each other's list, so... I wonder if there will be times where we pick the same song for the same category or the same song for different categories. Mm-hmm. It's all just, it's all just exciting. Is the point. Well, I do have some backups. <laughs> I have some, I have some backups and some that I'm just really, we're going to have to talk about them. So yes, yeah. well, take it away. Pick a category and tell us your pick. Um, okay. I'll go with one that was very easy for me to start off. Um, I'm going to start with the wedding song category. Okay. And my choice is literal because it was played at my wedding when Angelica walked down the aisle. And that is Beautiful Life from One and One. (laughs) The instrumental version was what you walked to, but point still stands. Yes, it was. And because I remembered that, I figured that was going to be your pick, and I didn't pick that song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tell us uh, anything else to explain your pick? Um, I just feel like it It just has really nice, like, romantic vibes. The, like, acoustic guitar is, like, very nice, and there's, like, twinkly, like, pianos, and it just, like... I don't know. It sounds like a it sounds like a nice mm-hmm. beautiful spring day and I got married on a beautiful spring day and like it yeah. it fit. It fit it the was wedding very vibe fitting. so well. So, yeah, it was very fitting. Um I chose a song that has a kind of similar instrumental with like the um acoustic guitar, but I chose Honesty yeah. from the Sherlock EP. that song is so beautiful it makes me like very warm and emotional whenever i hear it and i feel like that's a song that when you look at the lyrics like it would work if you kept the lyrics in like it is a romantic song in the sense that like it's about building a trusting relationship Mm -hmm. um that i think is like you know it's about building something that lasts um but as an instrumental as well that would be like a perfect song totally yeah my officiant quoted the reflect you like a mirror part in my wedding yeah um so the lyrics do go and yeah that is a song (laughs) that the first time I heard it, it just inexplicably made me burst into tears. It's like so beautiful and sincere and heartfelt. I like immediately just felt the love coming off it. And I was like, I don't know why I'm crying, but this song just makes me cry. It's so good. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Oh, good choice. I love it. Good choice. Love it. You want to pick the next category we do? Sure. And I'm going to pick this one because this was my hardest category okay. and I'm curious to see what you picked. So I want to talk about the workout song. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my pick is Punch Drunk Love from their third album, The Misconceptions of You. Oh, 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 punch. This was my hardest category because for one, like we were saying, Shiny is like a niche group sort of, and they don't really make, um, they don't make songs that always have a very consistent rhythm throughout the whole thing, which I think is like what people look for in a workout song. But I also struggled because I don't know what people look out, look for in a workout song because I do yoga or dance and like, I don't get to pick the music. So I don't know what makes a good workout song, For sure. but I picked punch drunk love because it's very energetic and the boys work out in the staging. They have like their own little boxing and I felt like it was a good song. It would be a good song to go running to. Yes. Um, so I love it. And I love that song. It's so happy. <laughs> this is a category that I had four songs written down for and I didn't know what I was going to choose. And Punch Drunk Love is one of them because to me, a workout song personally is like something with a steady enough beat that will keep me walking or hiking or whatever. Because that's the thing I struggle or treadmilling. I like really struggle with that 
and I truly need like a BPM to like mm-hmm. walk to or I'm not going to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that punch drunk love is good because it's like it's a steady one for if you were like hiking Griffith because it's like punch dun 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 one two dun 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 like it's not too fast but it is steady yeah and it's also very like encouraging yes knock out you're like yeah i can do it it. (laughs) um so like my other i feel like i have to talk through my choices and i don't know what my choice is but my oldest like workout playlist shiny songs that i've had for a long time are dangerous um and dynamite which are both on misconception oh, sure. albums i think um because those have like a faster like both have like a faster driving beat and i feel like dynamite feels like a workout song because of shiny world four that's where Mino does his whole ab dance so like yeah yeah, yeah. you can you can use that as inspiration right like let it totally. fuel your working out <laughs> Um, and then a more recent one that also has like a much more like steady house beat, which is Savior from Odd. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's just got a very like. <laughs> that to me feels like a song that would motivate me to keep running on the treadmill. And it's one of the songs that they, like, the, the songs that make me think of the times in the concerts where they're, like, running and screaming. Mm-hmm. And that's, like, one of those songs. So, like, yeah, I have a bunch of choices. But, like, I don't know. I think maybe Savior is my answer. But I feel like all four of those have good, have, like, the right BPM to be, like, a, a jogging song. Yeah. Nice. Do you want to pick the next category? Yeah, sure. Let's do um, complete opposite vibes of like a pump up workout song. What is your rainy day song choice? My rainy day song choice is Don't Let Me Go. So is mine. I knew it. I knew that. It's the only choice. (laughs) Yeah, it is. It's the best choice. I did have another song, but I I I was like, I can fit it into this category Mm. and then still talk about it. But yeah, Don't Let Me Go was like my first my first choice. I remember when that song or when that album came out, I would just like put that song on repeat. And they did it live in their little comeback show. And Mino hit that beautiful high note, and we were so (laughs) proud of him. Main vocal Mino, ready to party. Always love him. It's such a beautiful song. It like almost sounds like there's rain in the background of it. Yeah, because it starts with like a very with like a vinyl crackle, like an LP Mm -hmm. crackle, and the piano sounds far away until it kicks in so it like immediately puts you in like a space that says yes. like it's raining outside and maybe you're in a cafe and maybe it's old times i don't know just like go with it <laughs> it like definitely has really strong vibes of rainy day yeah i love well, that we i'm glad that, that i'm one. glad we picked the same one <laughs> me too amazing all right I'll pick the next category. And how about songs that make you feel nostalgic? Okay, yeah. This was interesting. And I feel like I have I had I have two choices. And one choice was my excuse to talk about um Farewell My Love. Cause that's like that is my favorite shiny B-side, but I've talked about that in the Shawl Guide, I'm pretty sure, because that's my favorite shiny B-side. And, like, it has... That's from that, the Odd album, right? Yes, but it has those crazy, like, stints at the beginning that are like... Like those slow jam synths yeah, yeah, yeah. that I, like, love. But I think a song that sounds even more deliberately, like, old-timey and makes me, like, think of boy bands of yore is my other ride or die favorite old shiny song which is romantic from the shiny world album honestly the first two shiny albums are like 
pure old school 90s Mm R&B. Like, they aren't that weird. They're, like, pretty standard, honestly, but they're really good. They're so good. Um, And Romantic happens to be my favorite from that era. And, like, yeah, it feels like, it feels like nostalgia. I didn't really know how to, like, this was a question I saw and I wasn't even sure what it meant or, like, what Mm -hmm. I wanted it to mean. But I think I'm choosing for it to mean like something that feels like a nostalgia, like a nostalgia for an, a time in my life, I guess. Yes. Okay. So I thought about it in that way as well. I was like, is this something that makes me feel nostalgic about a particular time in my life that I just associate with this shiny song? Or am I picking a song that makes me feel nostalgic about shiny. Right. Sure. Yeah. And so my, ultimately I ended up going with the other, with the second category as my like final pick because the first thinking about it as nostalgic for my own life. I thought about runaway, but I've talked Mm. about that song a lot. So my official pick is your name, which is from the Uh. Lucifer album. Great. beautiful it's so beautiful and I just like it's like yeah it's a fantastic uh like slower song and it you can just get like the rich shiny vocals in it and it's just it it is from like I said the Lucifer album which is the second one so it's like old school shiny and it's just beautiful yeah I'm going to I'm going to piggyback off that and take us into the next category because that is my choice for the sounds like love category. Oh great. Is Good your choice. name because Good that choice. opening of the Come on. I love it. <sighs> yes. It's so yes. Pr- it's just like so delicate and pretty, but it's like got that but it's also got that nice like groove running through the whole thing. That's just like, oh, I love it. I love your name. Me so, too. Yeah, it's that's such a my good song. So that was my choice too. for Sounds Like Love. Okay, for Sounds Like Love, my choice for Sounds Like Love is Aside from the third album, Misconception. Love you. Ooh. <laughs> That song is like one of those cheesy, shiny songs that they sing when they are like in the carts, like yes. riding around. And that's why to me it sounds like love because it just like, I just think of them being so happy and like smiley and wavy and like all, oh, and taking it just makes in all their so love. Happy. Exactly. It's just a moment them. of sharing love with your fans. <laughs> I love it so much. Oh, it just makes me very happy. <laughs> That is a really great choice. I really, really like that. I really like that. Um, this was so fun to do. It, it was just like such a great, ex- I literally like, I have a shiny playlist that is just their full discography. And I just started it from Amigo at the top and went yeah. all the way down. <laughs> I just put it, yeah, I put my whole shiny on shuffle. And then when a title track would come up, I'd be like, no, it's not your turn. And Me too. Skip it really aggressively. I skip it too. <laughs> And then I had to be like, wait, is this a title track or just a song that I've listened to so much that I think it's a <laughs> title track? It with, yeah, <laughs> for sure. For sure. Um, I picked that My, category. So. Okay, I'm going to pick next. Um, I want to know what song did you think needed an MV? Oh, my God. I thought about this for such a long time. I thought about this one for such a long time. And I think that the decision that I came to just because I think it would have been, it really would have been something because, because of the era itself and because the like two stages we got of it were so important. But I think odd, I should have gotten a music 
video. I agree. That was my choice. Oh my God, yay. I also picked Odd Eye from the Odd Album. Yes. Yeah. It was such a strange song. The music video would have been really cool, whatever it would have been. Um, yeah, nice. I, that was a category too that I struck. I couldn't like. I was like, oh man, like I don't know. There's so many different songs that I would have liked, but then as soon as Odd Eye came to my brain, I was like, there's no doubt about it. No question, this is the one. Yeah, I was trying to think of songs that like had. Because uh, I can't think of any examples right now, but others that I thought of, I was like, oh, yeah, but, you know, like, that one has that really epic stage from, like, Shiny World, or, like, that one has that, and, like, I felt satisfied about it. But, like, mm -hmm. Odd was too special. Like, Key in that eye patch was just really something. There was just something about it, and the small bits that we got was just not enough. And yeah, I could have used so much more. <laughs> I agree. Like the two stages of Odd Eye that we have are so I think like legendary in sh in Shiny World, right? right? Like they are a favorite of Shawls everywhere. And yeah, we we didn't get enough. Like they all look that is like peak shiny beauty. We've right. said it a thousand times. Like everybody looked so gorgeous in that era. So it would have been a delight like delight. to just have a music video, another one commemorating yes. it. Um and also that stage, like all it had female backup dancers in mm -hmm. it, which Shiny doesn't do very often. Chairs. So like, yeah, and chairs. So like it would have been really cool to get a to get a full music video for that one. And I feel like that's a song that has a really good story. Like the storyline of it would have been good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow. What, what could, could have been? been? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you pick the next one. Um, okay, I'm going to go with the next one that I have at the top, which is a karaoke song. Okay. And this is one where I feel like I had a couple of really good answers, but I decided to go with a literal answer and choose a song that we sang at karaoke at maybe my 28th or 29th birthday party. And that is Symptoms from the Everybody <laughs> album because it is that was my first really fun too. to like sing it and body roll and get all the feels out into the microphone real loud. Yeah. <laughs> got all the drama you need yeah all of my karaoke choices were like singing songs <laughs> like ballads and symptoms was my first choice because that is also one of the first songs i like learned the like sil sounds to <laughs> phonetically could, learned like, it confident whatever, yeah. yeah exactly phonetically sing along to um but my official choice is one off of hello <laughs> Okay. That song, I that was my other one in Rainy Day, and when I like, I had to I had to have it somewhere on the list, so I put it here because the song toward the, I mean, it's a beautiful song all throughout, but then toward the end, they just go off with the ad libs and they start like layering on top of each other and it's so fun to sing along to and to just like ah, whatever yes. shoot for it and I love it I love that song that's such a good album it is such a good album it is such a good it's album it's such a good album um it's your turn to pick the category ooh ooh okay okay um okay well I'm just going to go down this uh list so the next one that we haven't done, I think, is the For the Locals one. Yeah. So what, what would you pick to show someone who's not a K-pop fan? I was trying to think of this, like, in a pure song challenge way. Like, if, say, this was the Instagram song challenge where you play the clip and people are tapping through it. I was trying to think of, like, what is, like, audio only Mm -hmm. a song that somebody might listen to do and be like, oh, wow, this is really cool and good. And it might grab them. And I feel like 
my true like present most present if we don't use your stipulation answer is marry you because i have been forcing it on everyone me too (laughs) that's my real answer but that's a (laughs) pre-release that's technically a future song we right. can't talk right, about right, it right, right, right now. Right. Um, but I think I landed on just because I think it's one of their more interesting songs for a lot of reasons, but the sound design in it is particularly spectacular. And so my choice is Prism from One of One. <laughs> good choice and that is a stage that i have chosen as like an intro video like every once in a while um if someone tells me that they want to watch like choreography or something um because mino looks so fucking fine and that song is great um and yeah it like, has really the, interesting. like it has the bed squeak <clears throat> percussion which mm-hmm. is like so wild every time i hear it i like can't believe it's a thing and like, yeah, the lay- the vocals are like layered in really crazy ways. And if you listen to it with like good over the ear headphones, it like it's one of those songs that like happens mm-hmm. all around you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just like it's a groovy booty shaker. So I like felt like it might be appealing. But this was a question I really struggled with because I do feel like shiny is kind of weird. Mm-hmm. And like you're the only person in my life who's ever saw- seen them and seen what I saw (laughs) everybody else just knows like oh that's Shannon's favorite they know it's my favorite and they respect that it's my favorite so many of my coworkers, when I told them like I sent them marry you I was like shiny's back they were like really genuinely happy they were like I am so happy for you I know what this (laughs) means to you but shiny's never grabbed them the way that I've like been Mm -hmm. able to get their attention with a monster x or a kai or whatever like or yeah, yeah. the way that everybody in my office loved Sh- Pentagon Shine. Because that's just right. like a song for the people. And I feel like Shiny doesn't really make songs for the people. If that makes any sense. Yes. No, it, it <laughs> makes sense to me. It totally. 100%. Which is why I, like, I think it's kind of funny that I like went in the total opposite direction with my first understanding of this and was like, let's pick the weirdest fucking (laughs) songs that I need other K-pop fans to know exists. Uh But ultimately the song I think would be like a B side that I think would be very palatable for someone who doesn't listen to K-pop. I chose love sick from the odd album. Yes. That's because usually view is my number one mm-hmm. choice if I'm going to think of something like okay I want this person who's like definitely not super like whatever someone who's gonna be hard to convince I will show them view mm-hmm. um, but then lovesick is off of that same album it was the b-side that they promoted one of the b-sides they promoted with it and I think there's like there's a there are a few like really perfect lines in English that like, yeah, if you were just going to play them like a snippet, um, (laughs) you could just like, I think you could grab them with Uh that one. Yeah. That's a really good choice. That's a really good choice. Cause I think because lovesick is a, a, like a continuation, a response, if you will, Mm -hmm. to replay, which I think everyone can agree is the most palatable and greatest shiny song because Everybody fucking loves that. Nobody mm-hmm. doesn't love that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I feel like Lovesick captures like the same spirit. And so does Marry You. And that's why they're a perfect mm-hmm. trilogy of perfect yes. song. I know. It's really perfect. <laughs> and like, yeah, Lovesick is like a more like mature replay, right? Mm-hmm. And so it still has these like great like harmonies and these great like R&B hooks to it. It's just oh, such a good song. I great love that choice. Song. Great choice. All right, what's the next category? I picked that one. So what's yeah. the next category? Um, I'm going to I'm gonna do one of these because I feel like two of the categories that are left are kind of similar. But okay. it's fine. So I'm going to go with the to remind yourself that you're cool as fuck category. I believe that in the, um, the Discord challenge that Mara did, there was a category that was like a song to eat a man to. Or like <laughs> she had a bunch of of categories that like boiled down to essentially this feeling 
of a song for like strutting, I guess. And I decided to go with a song that I think is very underrated in the shiny canon, and that is Queen of New York from the Everybody album. <laughs> was my first choice as well really? but I think we've talked about that song before we do so I didn't it. I didn't I picked something else but yeah that was my immediate choice because I was like songs that make you feel cool Queen of New York of course like mm-hmm. dun, 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 ba, da, ba. Oh, I love it you just like feel like strutting that's a song yes. to strut to Especially because the like, and then, like you're the, opening, the queen of New York. The opening lines with <laughs> Mino and Tamin doing their like very low voices. Yes. <laughs> and saying the words, it like makes you want to like walk hard Strut down yes. the street of New York. <laughs> Get out of my way, clear the sidewalk. I'm, I'm walking, walking here. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good choice, good choice. Um, I ended up going with a song. Uh, I don't know. I like kind of didn't really know what to pick because there's so many. I know. Okay, I'm gonna choose a song that this. I feel like I'm gonna choose the song, and everyone who likes NCT is gonna be like, "Why don't you like NCT? Do you <laughs> like this song?" But my choice is Alive from Okay. <laughs> that is that an song, interesting choice. That is a song that I have song to be in weird. a very specific mood to listen to. Yes, me too. But when it comes on, and if I am in the mood to mm-hmm. listen to it, that song goes so hard, and it hypes me up a lot. Like, I, you, like by the time they get into the rap, I'm just like, head banging! Like, yes! I love that song. It's so, it goes through, like, ups and downs, and it's just so, I love the beginning, like, yeah! This is like so. <laughs> Isn't there so a key lovely. rap that ends with a? Brrr. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That song is crazy. That song is so crazy. Um, but it's a yeah, it's a hype song, and I feel like it's a song where I was like, yeah, maybe that's mm-hmm. like I'm not cool enough to listen to music like this or mm-hmm. whatever. <laughs> yeah. But it, anyway, though. it's definitely something that if you've never heard that song before, I think you'll definitely be able to hear the origins of NCT from within mm-hmm. it. So for sure. Perfect. All right. We have two categories left. Um, and we'll do because, I mean, I don't know. What do you want to do? We can flip a coin. Let's just do, let's just break it up, break up the vibes and do comfort song first. Okay. Um, and mine was already discussed earlier in the list, but I think it's my truest choice. And I could come up with a backup, but this is my choice. My comfort shiny song is One from the Hello album. Because if I were to answer my question, the framing of the nostalgic question that you had earlier of like what makes you nostalgic mm-hmm. for shiny, like makes you nostalgic for shiny, there it is. Because that is the song that they sing at the end of the first Shiny World, and Ki and Onu mm-hmm. cry really hard. And I always think about that when I hear it. But that is a song that I never skip. And I sing along really loud. And it makes me like want to hold like a lighter up and like just do like sway arms and like think about how much I love Shiny. And it just makes me feel grateful and warm and loved and all of the Shiny feelings encompassed in like one sappy ballad that does go off at the end like you said yeah and all of those things that's my good choice my My comfort song is also like a throwback of to shiny and it is in my room from the first album amigo (laughs) 
love this song. It's like so, it's just one of those, like, it's just a croony, shiny ballad. Like, we're just gonna sing a pretty <laughs> song that sounds like a five harmony hug. And it's yeah. just beautiful. And I love the, like, uh, it's very cheesy. Like, the lyrics are, are like, you are my sun and like star, all of these things. It's like very over the top. <laughs> But it's so good. Oh, it just like yes. gets ya. And that song, like, I can't, I can't listen to that song and not feel like, not like hug myself. And yes. Just, like, feel happy swaying, happy swaying. So that's yeah, one that's of my those. Comfort song. It's great. Yeah, that's one of those like early album songs I was talking about that just like mm-hmm. sound like that comforting, nostalgic '90s boys boy harmony yeah, yeah, yeah. with some snaps in there baby it's so good okay so our last category that we had is a song to get ready to and i don't know how to like describe this category it just it's just a feeling like the mm-hmm. playlists i used to put on when my friends and i would be sitting in the sink to put our clubbing makeup on or whatever that's what i usually think of too okay okay mm-hmm. good and I, still I guess it that. could be like getting ready in the morning, but just something that is like energetic, right? Yes. That is like setting a vibe that you want for mm-hmm. your time. So, yeah. I was just going to say a vibe that like gets you in the mood to leave your house. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wherever totally. it is that you're going, you're like energizing yourself to leave. <laughs> right. And so I do feel like this is a similar, could be a pretty similar category to the like song to strut and feel cool to. Mm-hmm. Um, so they maybe could have been combined. But like I said, it was, it was just a really quickly written list. So anyway, my choice for song to get ready to is Chocolate from Married to the Music. <laughs> Wow, I love it. <laughs> because that song has um, talk rapping, which I feel like is always fun for when you're putting your mm-hmm. like lipstick on to be like doing all of the fun lines from Chocolate. I don't know. There's just some really good like one-liners in that song, and oh my God. it fits the going out vibe. That and they say like, "You want to be my lady tonight?" Like, yeah, you know. I think that's, <laughs> I think that's absolutely the vibe. Right. sets the mood. I can't believe it. Yeah. I chose to set a slightly different mood, but still energizing you to leave your house. Mm -hmm. And I kind of cheated in the sense that my choice is a Japanese release. Ooh, damn. I tried not to go there. I was like, don't go there. It will be too much. Just don't go there. For the most part, I didn't. But because this song, when I hear it, I immediately picture the stage of it in their concert. It had to be it. And it's 3 2 1 from <gasps> I'm Your Boy. Oh my God, yes. You ready now? 3 2 1. And now for something different. Yes, it's such a booty shaker. You can't listen. You can't not shake your butt when you're listening to that song. And that's if it if a song doesn't make it take like twice as long as it normally would have for me to get ready, then it's not a good getting ready song. (laughs) Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. I should be interrupted by my dancing. Mm. Yeah. And that's that's a song that does it to me. I love that. I love that (laughs) choice. Wow. Sneaky and good. I love it. (laughs) Sneaky, sneaky. Well, now that all of the Japanese albums are on Spotify, I'm like, wow. This is like a treasure trove of shiny music that I've never heard before. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, these are, these are main releases but i also feel like dazzling girl and downtown baby give very like going out vibes too the japanese catalog is pretty its vibe is definitely different 
Mm -hmm. It is different, but it's very, um, it is very energetic. Well, and they have those like stunning ballads. Oh my God. I was listening to I'm with, uh, I'm with you came on shuffle (laughs) and I had been just like skipping the Japanese releases. Mm -hmm. And then that song came on and I was like, no, we don't skip this song. (laughs) We don't skip this one. But that was my recommendation in the shovel episode, in the shovel guide. So I didn't include it in my list. Okay. But that is another contender for karaoke song and rainy day song <laughs> and comfort song. <laughs> Please. All of them. They're all here. They're all here. Yeah, I feel like my true comfort song is your number. <laughs> Cuz that's the song that just like resets that's a reset your brain. Yeah, yeah. Song. My sure. I had um also countless. Yes. If we were that's... including the story of like I would have but said that countless, was like, I think. is that is countless? Is that was a real single, right? It's like, not a B side. Oh yeah, that's okay, true. Yeah. It was the repackage. It was the. Re- it would have been like the married to the music. Yeah, it was right. the repackage. So it's true. It wouldn't have even counted. But that is a great song. These were all great songs, and this was yes, that very was fun. ultimately <laughs> yeah. Like in this this song or this song challenge didn't make me sweat as much as the like end of the year choices did because at the end of the day I was like they're all good songs like right, and I know we said that about the the end of the year awards too, but for some reason that felt more stressful. Like this mm-hmm. maybe it's just because it's shiny, and I was like no matter what I'm gonna be talking about shiny, right? And I think and I think that our our love is is not questioned at this point. And like, if we're just talking about like picking out shiny songs for moods is not like leaving out anything. Mm -hmm. It's not like, because with the end of year challenge, it's like, Oh my God, but I really liked this comeback. And if I don't say it, then like someone won't get my public love. True. Like all the shiny songs are good. And every minute spent talking about any Mm -hmm. of them is a worthwhile time. (laughs) And true. It's all good. So yeah, we'll make a we'll make a Spotify playlist of these. And then you'll have a perfect shiny playlist that will cover some different moods. And it's all B sides so you can be like in the mm-hmm. fucking no. In the no. Um yeah, and like hot tip just if you listen to like the whole Hello album, it's fantastic. Um, <laughs> if you're looking for like old school shiny stuff to get into. Um, but yeah, I was just going to say like we're going to end up with so many Spotify playlists because there's one for the Shawl's Guide. And then we already did a bonus B- favorite B-Sides playlist. And then there will be this one. And I think we have one for the shiny showdown or mm-hmm. the shiny bracket. And then there will be one for this new Don't Call Me episode. Oh my God. We'll have like an addendum for our Shaw Wolves guy. We're gonna have so much guys, so much shiny it's content, so guys. I'm so happy. And Jamin has a cat. Oh, I love guys, it. life is good, y'all. The cat life is, is so good. Small. That fucking cat is so, it's so small. small. It looks like the puppy eyes emoji. It just like <laughs> is that so cat? Weird. Is that like the eyes are so? The eyes are half of the head, <laughs> and it just. Looks up at Timmy with his big, big eyes. Oh my god, that cat's so cute. <laughs> it's so fucking cute. It's, so, it's so cute and small. It's so small. Like literally fits in one of his hands. <clears throat> it's so, so Timmy. Oh my god. It's so oh, exciting. shiny. Oh, shiny. Um, well. We have to finish the podcast, and that means we have a segment that's not about shiny. So we'll <laughs> we'll fold these feelings away for just a little bit and be right back with a random game. All right, we're back. And the universe heard us saying that we were you're not going to talk about shiny in this next segment, and it said, bet. <laughs> and it literally pulled up Too Heart. Which, if that doesn't immediately ring a bell, Too Heart is the duo formed by Wu Hyun from Infinite and Ki from <laughs> Shiny in 2014. We talked about this duo in our Hodgepodge Squad episode. They were technically not a subunit because they are from two different groups and two different companies, um, but they were a little project, so we put them in the miscellaneous episode. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah, they released their first mini album in March of 2014. Um, and there were two like singles on it, Delicious, which we'll watch in a minute and tell me why. Um, and they're not in the second music video. It's like a brother and an actress or something in the other music video. Um, but yeah, it was just like a short lived fun friend thing. Yeah, the two of them like were already really close and so they wanted they had talked about doing some kind of collaboration, but I think initially had planned on just doing like some kind of photo shoot or something along those lines and then it sort of snowballed, I guess, into this sort of mini project. Um and they never like officially disbanded cuz it was I think just something temporary and fun. Um but they only ever put out yeah, they only ever put out the one mini album. They've got two singles and like a couple other um, charted songs and yeah three music videos all together yeah I was trying to see if Wu Yun's like out of the military yet because I was like oh I wonder if that if that could ever happen again someday you never know is he out of the military? Because I think I saw clips of Key on this show, and I think he was with a member of Infinite, but I don't remember which one it was. The two of them were, like, sitting at a bar and talking about their experience in the military, and the guy who was behind the bar that I didn't recognize was, like, asking the Infinite if he would want to be in Key's, like, sar- in Key's, like unit or whatever, like, if he would want to be he's like subordinate and the guy was instantly like absolutely not (laughs) like he is such a hard ass like no (laughs) and I want to say it was Wuhyun but I don't know now the only news I'm finding when I type his name in is that at some point last summer him and that other member Sungyu got like public like scolded in the background of like a live like the CEO of their company was saying something shitty in the back of one of their lives and had to apologize about it and that was the last time they were in the news so I don't know Mm. interesting oh it's Chang Sub ah that's a member of Infinite isn't it Maybe. Or is that a beast? Ooh, or, maybe it's a beast. Wait, let's see. Or a Chelsea. B2B. Oh, maybe it's a B2B. Yep, it's a B2B. You're All right. Great. Nice. Good job. Good job. <laughs> For anyone who's interested, the show is called Sub o- Sub O Bar, I think. Sub A Bar. I don't know. No, Subo Bar. It was right the first time. Anyway, <laughs> has nothing to do with Two Heart because it wasn't an infinite. I was wrong. We are going to watch the Two Heart Wu Hyun and Ki delicious music video. I haven't watched this in so long. I like truly don't remember. I don't remember this song at all, but I'm ready. Three, two, one, go. All right, we've got our title card. <coughs> dusty, and so dusty curtains. They ah, they look like they're moving into like a summer home or something. Dusty, looking through Ha-ha, old Look at your things. shit. Oh, maybe it's like a childhood bedroom. Like oh, oh look, yeah, it's all these like stuff. bunk beds in the background. But it was like haunted house levels of dusty when we pulled those yes. first things down. Like, no one has lived here in so long. Oh, look at how cute he they He's very blonde. He has an undercut. Wu Hyun mm-hmm. has, like, a light perm and some brown hair. They're both, like, sweatered and looking comfy. <laughs> oh. Oh, and they found a flip book that's about, I guess, Ki as a baby. And there's one for Wu Hyun, too. Oh, he was a nerd. He loved to draw. <laughs> One likes night, one likes up. day. Oh, girl. They are like night and day. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> I remember this. <laughs> okay, yes. All right, we've got patterned suits. Keys is neon highlighter yellow. Keys so is red. bright. <laughs> And they're just in an all-white room. The background says delicious and sweet and this, like, curly Q Coca-Cola font. They've got some backup dancers that are dressed all in white, so they're the only, like, pops of color. 
Wu Hyun's backup dancers have fedoras and Keys have leather baseball hats. Because <laughs> they're like night and day. Oh, right. They have to be. Okay, yes, that's the whole thing. They're sweet and delicious. They're right. this and that. <laughs> I like the idea that delicious and sweet are opposites. Very different. <laughs> Got fun, cute choreo, with big swingy arms and smiles. Oh, All in there, just like funny. cuties playing on the bunk beds. And then cutting back to this like hip swinging choreo. Oh, good morning. They have bed head. <laughs> Wuhan's hair is a beautiful shade of purple. Yes, I thought it was brown earlier. But yeah, it's I said brown earlier, but it is. It's like a lovely purple they're like dancing at each other yeah it's like dance fighting Having competition oh now they're slap fighting in the bathroom <laughs> now they're jumping with bursts of paint Ooh, key. new outfit for the dancing dance in front of a diner Oh my god, so cute. They're wearing brown suits and doing little cute leggy couch dances. choreo. Oh, are they both going on this date at the same time? Is this like a trio date? Yeah, I'm guessing from what I've gathered is when they were cleaning out this childhood room, they remembered that they used to fight over that girl from school. And now they're like, mm. let's see what she's up to. She always liked me better. And then, like, they're settling this old beef about this girl. <laughs> Is she going to show up with a date? Girl. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> or a girlfriend. Or, like, something that, like, throws a real wrench in this. Oh, we're just throwing some sparks Swinging around. fireworks. That looks dangerous. I love... And these loud zebra pants yeah i love these diner outfits i love when somebody wears a hat so far back on their head because they have four inches of tall hair <laughs> that they're doing in the front first <laughs> that's fun i love oh. in k-pop music videos where the boys are putting this shaving cream on these like baby smooth faces it's so funny to me it is really funny the only idol I think I've ever seen where someone was like, oh, he didn't shave and it was noticeable is Changmin. Changmin is like else, a Jonas brother and he grows yeah. a mustache by the end of the day every day. But he's the only <laughs> he one. He was just making fun of the people who say that he shaves the scar into his eyebrow <laughs> by pretending to shave a scar into the uh, other one. <laughs> yeah, there's credits running and it's just they're in the bathroom they're, scene and doing yeah, they're just cute. like. Shaving. Shaving with fake razors like you do with I can only kids. assume. Yeah, I remember one time Coops called, I think it was Sunquan out for not shaving. And I was like, where? Shaving what? <laughs> <laughs> shaving who? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> These credits are adorable. <laughs> They're gagging over their toothbrushes. This bed head is so adorable. Yeah, it's really cute. Wuhan just has a like wave that's like sticking straight up. <laughs> Keys combing his to make it bigger. <laughs> Why do they keep barfing for? <laughs> it seemed like they were pretending to be hungover for a little bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
Maybe that's a direction somebody else. This is very long credits. Oh, this music video is almost seven minutes long. See, I was wondering it's when right. the like we'll story was going to come in because it was so long. I didn't realize it was long because of credits. But credits. I get it. I get in a situation like this where it's like it's not a real group quote unquote and it's like mm-hmm. it's like fan service for these fans and if it's the only thing yeah, they'll yeah. ever get you've got to tack three extra minutes of face and cuteness at the end of the music video so that you yeah get your money's worth I love it yay worth every penny and every second great job two heart yeah great great job thanks for being a thing yeah. Thanks for being a thing. Thanks for being a weird thing. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the point of the show where we do recommendations, but in an episode like this, like we gave you 20 recommendations, so I don't have anything else. And truly nothing has happened to me or I have seen since we last recorded. I still think that CIX song is really good. But I said that last week. I still mean it. But like that to me, that feels brand new. I feel like I that's the newest thing. And I already talked about it. So I got nothing. Yeah. The only thing that's happened um, since the last time we recorded is that Shiny put out a mood sampler for oh, their yes. upcoming <laughs> album. Baby. So we've got the seventh album upcoming, Don't Call Me. And the teaser looks like very fun, like pop arty sort of suburban like white picket fence set um which many shawls have said like looks very much like jonghyun's she is uh Mm -hmm. music video and jinky did post something about the music video with the caption chola which is the um korean title of she is so that like further connected the dots Mm -hmm. um and it looks like it's gonna be fun and quirky like something about realities becoming fantasies and fantasies becoming realities and possible alien body snatchers yeah we'll see i'm so curious because the only like write-up about the title track so far has described it as her has described the vocals as hysterical yes that this song is gonna have a lot of like big drama Mm mm-hmm about they really don't want this person to fucking call anymore. So, like, my brain is hearing the beginning of Why So Serious whenever I think about this potential song because Mm. that is, like, hysterical screaming (laughs) combined with, like, it's it's true. So, anyway, I don't know what to think. I don't know what to think. Um, I'm just so curious. And yeah, it looks so wild. Like that one teaser picture that everybody brightened up where they look like wet, wet rats with like who knows what like on their where heads. Where they're like, like in shadow or whatever. Yes. They have like but, weird. And Mino's clearly wearing like a longer wig. Uh-huh, and they, and and they looks have like, like weird wet. flower crowns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a little Smart. bit skeptical to see that one that is like in whatever full res we get of it because <laughs> that hair shaped looked weird. <laughs> and so we'll see. Yeah, the hair we'll the see. hair mysteries are so exciting to me because I feel like everything we've seen is like different for everyone. Like there's a blonde jinky and there's like a purple haired jinky and there's mm-hmm. like regular Mino and there's a red haired Mino and there's a long haired Mino and there's long hair key and there's not long hair key and there's perm taming and there's skunk taming and like, and then there's half gray taming. (laughs) Yeah. It's a lot of hair differences. So I wonder, I do feel like we're going to be getting, that must be all the different realities, right? The different like fantasies becoming realities. So they're going to be like different characters or something. Yeah. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. So our recommendation is get caught up. Listen to all these B-sides. Watch the teasers. Get caught up on all the shiny world lore because it's time, baby. It's happening. And we want you to be here with us. 
Yeah, and we will we will be here to catch you up on everything you need to know. Um, next week, can we go ahead and s- yeah, let's already know say what we're it. Doing? Okay, next week we will be putting out an addendum, a uh, Shawl's Guide, the revised edition, in which we will be covering everything that has come out since our Shawl's Guide. So that mostly includes the story of light because our Shawl's Guide came out right before their tenth anniversary and their tenth album. Um, so we will be covering the story of light and whatever has else has happened news wise um, up until today so that you can have all the deets all the deets and then uh, come back special after that to yeah. get into all of the nitty gritty of this the seventh yeah. shiny album and it's so exciting yes. Yeah, we'll talk through the album. We'll talk about and scream about the music video. We, uh, It'll be a great time. It'll so be get ready time. for the next couple weeks of shiny content. We said it was coming, and here it is. Here it is. Deal with um, it. Oh. oh. Um, <laughs> so if you have anything to say about that, if you want to send us some uh, sign- shiny gifs or whatever, we will accept them at AMA K-pop Pod on Twitter and Instagram or amakpoppod at gmail.com. Um, we have a Discord where you can talk to other people who listen to this show. There's a link to it in the social media bios. Um, you can call us, 181-AMA-K-POP-5, if you want to leave a voicemail. Definitely, I feel like when the Don't Call Me video comes out, people should call us and leave us. They should call us and leave us voicemails about it for the Comeback Spectacular episode. Well done. Well done. Yes. I knew we could do. I'm so I when they announced that it was called Don't Call Me, I was like, oh, my God, we're going to get a drop. We'll get a drop for the show. Yeah. They'll like have a new good thing we can use for a show drop anyway. Um. Also, Spotify I wonder if it will pave. Playlist. Go ahead. No, <laughs> no. What? I was just gonna say if it will pave the way for a future song battle. Doesn't Eric Nam have a song called "Don't Call Me"? Don't he call does. me, right? Yeah. We'll yeah, see, we'll and see. I played it on the show once when I edited the "Don't" out. Mm-hmm. As the call me. Else, I didn't just say <laughs> call me. And I'm gonna do that to the shiny song too. Just wait. Um, there's we have a Spotify where you can find playlists of stuff like that we have a youtube where there's some video content we have a patreon where you can pay us a little bit of money and there's more video video content more video content we have dance lessons we have really in-depth times where we look at stage outfits we Mm -hmm. have a pictionary game we show off our k-pop stuff like we've done a lot of fun things on patreon at this point so yeah you should join and then as because as soon as you join you can see all the things that have Yeah, you get them all out. right away. Yeah. Even the months that you weren't there for. Yes. So join. Um, and we have a P.O. Box. Yes. P.O. Box 26096, Los Angeles, California, 90026. Yeah, that's where we are. Um, so thanks for hanging around for this episode. And we'll see you next week for more Shawl Shiny. content. <laughs> more shiny for everyone see you then goodbye (laughs) Jonghyun your inspiration Gonna it? believe this. Do they it's give us shiny? Two heart. <laughs> what a delight! Oh my god! You the universe terrifying. heard us say that we weren't gonna talk about shiny, and it said no. Yeah, you <laughs> are.